My granddaddy, uh, Levi Crane, is the one that he had Crane stables to begin with. And dad grew up, my, our dad grew up with, with uh, which was Frank Crane, grew up, you know, with the horses and helping his daddy. And uh, years ago, they would haul groceries from Wahala to Highlands in wagons. They did that way back, uh -huh. you know. They didn't have no roads, right. wagon roads. Then, uh, after my granddaddy died, my dad kept the business. And, of course, all of us boys were, grew up in the business. And Oscar and Clarence and, and Carlton and, uh, and Frank McCloy, me and, and, and Robert. Robert's the youngest. But all the boys grew up in the business. The girls, I had two girls, and they stayed, they were at home helping Mama all the time, big uh -huh. family. Yeah, wait, and, I, uh, I lost count. How many kids were there? They were, they were uh, eight. Wow. Eight. Two girls and six boys. Uh, Grandpa, they, uh, they lived in town. Uh-huh. And up, up there, right, actually, it's right back of, uh, used to be the gallery. Uh, art gallery there on the left going through town. Uh-huh. They, they had a big house there, and, and they lived there. Had a barn right down there, right in front, about where the gallery is, I reckon. Uh-huh. And uh, so then when, when Grandma, she did uh, laundry and washing for people. And uh, so he had the horses, and they moved out here and bought this place hmm. and built here. They built here probably in 19... Roughly, I'd say 1924. Yeah, but back then, before people had cars, there must have been a lot yes, of call yes. for people oh, hauling yeah. stuff oh, down yeah. to Wahala. Right, right. Yeah, they hauled all the groceries of my dad and my, my uncle, Uncle Phil. They weren't but two boys. And they would haul the groceries in. It'd take them two days, a day to go down and a day to come back and uh, to get groceries. And dad said uh, many at the time it. Uh, It'd be in the wintertime, it'd be real cold, and there was a place somewhere between here and there, around Pine Mountain, I'm thinking, that kind of they sheltered under a rock. And they would build a big fire up out in front of that, and they'd get back in behind to stay warm at night. Wow. And, and grandmother would put uh, heat rocks and put in the wagon, and the rocks would be real hot, and they'd put them in the wagon to keep their feet warm during the day traveling. Yeah. So they did that. Because they'd haul passengers too, like they were going to go. To uh, no, they just haul groceries. Just haul groceries. Just haul groceries. Yes. Uh -huh. So the the first stable is was out. It was there in Main, you know, behind Main Street. Main Street there in town. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So when they moved out here and built their house here, is that when they built this uh, stable? Built also, the barn. The original barn was built right here. Stood right there. And this barn is a replica of that barn. Uh huh. And uh, in nineteen, uh, I guess. 64, we tore that barn down, or built this barn, then we tore that barn down. <laughs> that makes sense. And uh, it was getting, that barn was getting pretty old, so we built this one. Uh -huh. I, I think it was around 1964. Uh -huh. So when did you start, uh, like, having trail, you know, let, letting people ride horses? Well, uh, my dad did that basically, I guess, all, pretty well all his life. Oh, my him and Simon Speed of, of, uh, were partners in the Holland Country Club barn. And they had horses there during the summer. And then Dad worked different jobs during the, you know, year round, but he always had his horses and had somebody. Then we came along, Clarence and Carlton, more or less took it over and Oscar. Mm -hmm. And then when the, uh, Frank and I got big enough to help, we was in on it. And we, from a country club barn, Dad and Simon, they kind of, I don't reckon, split up. They just quit, you know. And Dad come up town and bought the Zellner barn, which is across from uh, uh, First Baptist Church in Highland, uh -huh. uh, where the drugstore is now. There's a barn there, belongs to the Zellners. Well, we rented that during the summer months. And Oscar and Clarence and Carlton ran that barn. And, and, and then from there, we went to the Helen's Barn, which is right down where Helen's Barn is now. Yeah. And uh, so uh, they were there for a number of years. And from there, we came back and went over on Spring, uh, 
Chestnut Street, Oscar? I just was. It's Chestnut Street over there. Kind of where they're putting in that new trailer. Yes, trailer farm. Trailer, trailer, trailer park. park. Yes. Trailer farm. And, and that's where we had our, our barn for a year and year. So you said the people, that's where you, the horses would sleep here at night. They stay here at night because they could lay down and roll in big barn for them to stay in. Uh -huh. and, and we'd transport them back and forth every morning and night. And a kid from Highlands, uh, Nettie Bryson was one of them, and grew up, Nettie grew up riding horses. Uh -huh. And Nettie was little, but he'd crawl up a horse's leg. When he was five, six years <laughs> old, he could go up a horse's leg like a squirrel and, and ride anything. He was a real good rider. And then Jimmy Bryson, that runs the Bryson food store, he, he rode a lot. Jimmy would always go to sleep for riding. His mother would come down and bring Jimmy and Nettie to ride before Nettie got his horse, and we'd rent him a horse. And then Nettie got a horse, and he'd come down and helped us at the stables. Uh -huh. And Jimmy would ride, and five minutes on the trail, Jimmy would go to sleep. And I'd on be the leading horse, on mean? the horse, and I'd be leading his horse, and I knew he was going to sleep, so I'd, I'd watch, and I'd get him, put him in front of me, and I carried him, and. No tell how many dollars his daddy's paid us for him to ride and him sitting up there sleeping didn't even know what he was doing. <laughs> but he sat there and slept and they knew but they knew he was sleeping. Yeah. But Jim had to go to sleep before he got on a horse. <laughs> and uh, and but, you said that um because you had to transport the horses but both to the Chestnut Street location and back every day, kids would come and and be willing to help you with kid that? would come. All the kids a lot of kids around towns, uh the Galloway boys, uh uh Bryson, Bryson board, and Eddie, he would always, him and Jim would come, and uh, the Callaways, Sammy, and uh, what's her name, Joanne, the sister, Joan, and uh, was their brothers, or sisters, and they would come and uh, and ride back and forth. So they, they helped us a lot. And uh, the McCall's down here, uh, Mike McCall, Frida, uh, they, they would help. Rogers and Noah Rogers and, and uh, Junior. Junior rode some, not much, but Nora and uh, and, and what, what's the youngest girl's name? Margaret, Margaret Ann. Ann. They rode a lot. Uh, Margaret Ann and, and, and Noah rode quite a bit. And Margaret really rode a lot. Her and Frida were the same age and they rode a lot. But it was a great help to us to get the horses transferred. We couldn't have done it by ourselves. Yeah. And. Uh, they were getting a free ride, but yet we were getting a lot of good help out of them. Yeah. Ride them back to the barn. Right, because you got like a free ride by Absolutely. helping them transport the Absolutely. horses. Absolutely. You know, and it was just a heck of a lot of fun, and you know, our parents didn't mind. In fact, they enjoyed us getting out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> but now I see why you fell asleep. It was 6 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Oh, no, this would happen on any ride. <laughs> it was just comfortable. Yeah, is that what it was you <laughs> yeah. think? You just yeah, we, had our own, we had our own horses there at our house on Fifth Street. And, uh -huh. uh, but, you know, there was all the friends hung up there that sometimes we'd have 25 or 30 kids, you know, waiting to fill eight or 10 spots. Right. Wow. So, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. And and uh, the Crane family, of course, they were just, they were just excellent to all of us. Uh -huh. Great part of our childhood. Yeah. Hate to see it gone. Yeah. Well, so where would people ride the horses? We'd ride all the trails back then was there wasn't no paved roads around here. All of them were, were gravel. Right. So we rode a lot of gravel roads around here. Bear Pen Mountain we rode. That was a good one hour's ride, and uh, uh, Little Bear Pen was a good one hour's ride. We'd go to the the Bowery, which was a two hour ride. We'd make a two hour ride out of that, and uh, then on weekends Sundays we'd have a, a special. And we'd let them ride, we'd ride three hours, we only charged them a dollar an hour for three hours. So we charged them three dollars for, for, and they'd ride three hours. And we'd go to Highlands Falls or either Glen Falls. Wow. And uh, that was a good ride. And, and uh, we'd usually on weekend, we'd have uh, eight, 15, 20 horses, you know, on a, in a group, because everybody wanted that special. Where did people go for riding? Oh, this was back in the early, late 50s, early uh -huh. 60s. But uh, we had a uh, ride around Bear Pen. That was all gravel then. Of course, most of it still is today. 
And then the most interesting, of course, in there through uh, evolvement of our uh, town, you know, the Kelsey Trail would go all the way to the top of Whiteside. And now, of course, you yeah. know, you've got Highlands Falls and, and uh, Colossagia and Wildcat mm -hmm. and, you know, and there in that place where yeah. the Kelsey Trail was. And you used to always also take one down Foreman Road, you know, down around Mirror Lake. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were several trails that were available and uh, none of them had much pavement on it. Right. So and, you, you had you ridden a horse out to White um, Whiteside on Kelsey Trail? Oh, gosh, yeah. Wow. Probably hundreds of times. Wow. And you, you go know, by Highlands Falls? That was before Highlands Falls. And I meant you'd go by the actual waterfall. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, actually, the waterfalls from the Kelsey Trail were about 200 feet down another trail. Uh -huh. but, but yes, is the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> How long would it take you to ride a horse out to Whiteside? Well, out there and back, about three hours. Uh -huh. wow. Something like that. Real pleasant ride, though. You know, and we used to keep the trail, uh, and, and uh, the cranes were very instrumental in it, too. You know, we used to go out and trim a trail to where we could actually ride a horse on it. Mm -hmm. And there were several people that uh, had horses that did the same thing because, you know, obviously that, that a trip to Whiteside is always special, and it was then, and yeah. it certainly still is now. Yeah. And one time I was riding down through there, and the briar grew up. Uh, uh, you know, and it was, what it was old logging roads, what it was. And, and it, in the summertime, you know, the blackberry briar would grow up and just about close the road up. So, uh, I was going through there one day and I had a machete on my saddle and my horse was eating. And uh, by the time I got ready to whack briars, she reached over to get a mouthful and I clipped the end of her ear off. So, it wasn't too funny when I got back home, my dad saw it, but still, it all happened. Well, I started coming to Highlands in 1955 with a good friend, Winky Monstead and we stayed with her grandparents on the backside of Satula Mountain. And we had both gone to camp in this area. And so we really liked to ride. They were riding camps. And we're both from New Orleans. And so we'd come up and we'd head for a crane stable. But in those days, there were two crane stables. There was one at the Highlands Country Club and one out on the corner of Fifth and Chestnut in a field, which now is a trailer park. And we would ride preferably from the Fifth Street location because you could go up Chestnut, go into Lower Lake Road, go up Big Bear Pen, you could go up um, Horse Cove Road, carefully, you know, dodging the cars, and get to the Bowery Road, and then ride all the way up the Bowery. But in those days, the Bowery Road stopped, oh, about where Sagey turns off. And there was a creek there, and you'd stop and water your horses. Well, sometimes we'd go across the creek and along the path, and then dismount and pick blueberries. And one time coming back down from there, there was a big storm and lots of thunder. And my horse bolted and we came down really fast to Upper Lake Road to the corner. <laughs> but we had a great time and we really preferred Chester Lee, the younger son, to take us because he'd let us trot and canter. And Most of the other ones, they would just let you walk, is that right? Right, Clarence and... Uh, the other uh, Oscar, Oscar mm -hmm. would make us walk. <laughs> Chester was more indulgent. Huh? Yes, and then sometimes Mr. Crane would allow us to ride horses from Highlands Country Club back to the barn on Oak Street. And so we'd ride along the Dillard Road and bring the horses back up to the barn for him. Yeah, because that's where they, they kept them at night, was at, at the Oak Street. Right. But then they would have... The and they'd others. trail them out there in the daytime. Mm -hmm. But we'd ride as many times a week as Judge Jean Vier would take us out there and <laughs> drop us off as teenagers. 
And then after we were both married, we continued to ride at Crane Stable, but it moved then to the location on Oak Street. But at this barn, we had uh, 12, 15 horses in, the, in a real busy month in the summer. The club barn down there, Oscar would have, I think that barn held 10 horses, and he kept, he had to keep 10 down there. So we had a pretty good strand of horses at, the, at both barns. The barn itself would hold uh, uh, around 18, 18 to 20 horses. We had uh, 10 stalls on the inside and we had six stalls on each outside shed. And uh, so we, we could hold, we could, we could stable at night uh, uh, 18 horses. But there's times we had more than the barn would hold. We'd leave some in the pastures at night. But, uh, so was this fenced in, like a fenced in pasture? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. the pasture, all this was pasture. And uh, yeah. And and what in the winter time would they? Winter time, uh, early winter time, we kept them here, wintered them here, and uh, uh, a lot of the horses in in the that we used in the summer we would rent from farmers, and they turned their crops by, and we would rent the horses and use them in the, in the barn. Then we'd take them back. But the horses we owned, Dad always owned ten or twelve, mm -hmm. and we'd keep them here. We used to, that field there, used to, they'd be 20, 25 stacks of hay. We didn't have no baling. We had to stack it. And uh, we'd stack that hay, and then we, as we needed it, we'd tear down a stack and haul it to the barn for the horses. And uh, that's how we did for years and years. In later years, we started taking them to South Carolina during the winter and pasturing down there. And we'd rent pasture from, from uh, a guy by the name of Billy Richardson. When did the, the stables close? What year did you quit riding, Oscar? Uh, yes, about the last year was 96 or 96. 96 or 97. Really? Yeah. That late? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I lived here then. How come I didn't ever ride any? I don't know. Too tight, I guess. <laughs> didn't charge but $2. <laughs> I think the, the most we ever charged was $2, wasn't it? Yeah, I imagine you would. Yeah, I think that's what you charge. We charged a dollar and a half for years and years and years. And even in 96, you're still only charging $2? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was crazy. Yeah, I know. When uh, your dad died, he left the barn to you, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so how many years did you run it? 10 to 15. Yeah. So what was it like running the barn? Did you have a lot of people here in the 80s and 90s? Yeah, we had quite a few. Well, at, at that time, where where would you take the horses? Well, I, I run right here, you know. Uh huh. And I work here all the time. Yeah. At that time. But could you, but it, a lot more was paved over by that point. So. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so where would you, where would the people take the horses? Well, we go to Big Bear Pen and mm -hmm. Murray Lake down here and around like that. All right. We'd we'd take the same ride. Uh huh. Well, I don't know how I missed all this. Do what? I said, I don't know how I missed seeing all these horses. Yeah. Well, how many horses did you have? Did you still have that many horses? No, not now. Yeah. Uh, I lost one two months ago. I've got one left. Why did you close the stable? <clears throat> well, there got to be too many paved roads. Yeah. And really too many dangerous drivers, you know, to be on them. And it's just too much right there to think about all the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. you tell me anything about that, the summer people? Well, yeah, we we had several good people that come in the road, you know. Uh-huh. And that, that's what kept us going. Yeah. It's just like running a story and a thing, you know. You got to have sales and halfway treat them decent. Yeah. From to come back. Right. Well, your prices were sure decent. Oh, yeah. Chester was saying you never charged more than $2? Well, I, I, I finally got up to two and a half there and $3, I think. And that was like for an, an hour ride? Yeah, yeah. In the 90s. That's cheap. <laughs> I don't want to see how you paid for the horse feed at that price. It was hard. How, how do you feel about the what the, the Fine Arts Center is going to do with the barn? Well, as far as I know, it's going to be all right. Uh-huh. Of course, 
It won't be the same, you know, but it'll, it'll always be here, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice that they're they're gonna save it and use it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it ain't gonna be so we can use it anymore. Maybe they'll they'll never use it, you know. But not for horses, no. The barn will still be here. Yeah, I think they're gonna do pottery in the barn. Yeah. I married a girl from Highlands uh, some 42 years ago. We. I took her off the mountain and we moved to Virginia and uh, we were some 500 miles from here. Our daughter Caroline came along in about 1970 and um, as she got older we would make an annual, well semi-annual trip to Highlands, usually spending a week during the summer months with uh, Betty's parents out on the, in the short off community on Cheney Lane. We, as Caroline got older, her parents encouraged us to take her, take her over to the uh, crane stables. And we did, beginning when I think Caroline was about seven or eight years old. And it was the neatest experience. Um, from the very beginning, we would, uh, we met the uh, cranes, uh, the brothers, and my recollection is with Oscar, who would always lead us on the uh, ride. Sometimes they would be the only the two of us, uh, Caroline and me, or sometimes it would be five or six. We would ride for about an hour. We'd take off from the crane stable and ride down around uh, Mirror Lake, spending about an hour, a good long hour, just gently looking at the trees and the lake and uh, sometimes people would stop and talk. Uh, just a very memorable, pleasurable experience that we had with um, Oscar Crane and their very nice family. Um, just a good tie back to Highlands and uh, we're grateful for that experience. Yeah, and so your daughter really enjoyed that? Caroline still talks about that. She's now 37 years old and just uh, enjoys, enjoyed that experience. They're very athletic and just love to be on horses. From Oak Street? I only remember the Oak Street uh, stables. Uh, just something like out of the, I guess the Old West where you would have a livery stable and uh, lots of horses, <laughs> but uh, all very well cared for and just uh, very gentle people and uh, nice to have known those folks. When I had children, the kids would just love to come with me and, and they grew up riding at Crane Stable. And we'd go early in the morning and go uh, down to Mirror Lake and there'd be fog and the woods would look so mysterious and we'd ride around the lake. And it was always so sad when you'd come up to that last curve and you'd no, the ride was over, your hour was up. Well, back in the 50s, how much did it cost for an hour? You know, I don't remember. Yeah. We planned that, I babysat, you know, it kind of saved my money up so we could go riding at Crane Stable. <laughs> One thing my daughter said when she would come back each summer, that Mr. Crane would put her on a better horse each year because she was bigger and more skilled at riding. And she really enjoyed that. She looked forward to being a bigger person in Highlands. <laughs> I had several favors because if they, if they were gentle, I liked that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were good to sleep on, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So that was, uh, it was a lot of fun, and I wouldn't trade it for anything, yeah. really. They were just, the Crane family were just real good folks and still are good folks, and they were, they were real good to the kids' uh, in town, they were really good.